they don't impress me. There are some people talking about how you might end up to go to tie scenarios because of them. Um, that might happen, but like, there's already a ton of reasons in this game when you're talking about competitive stuff to bring reasons to remove little creatures to the game. Obviously, Embrimps are still there. Rister Grimms has always been there. Witch of the Eye has always been there. So there's already people bringing answers to stuff like this to the table in all of their decks that are competitive. The only time I see these stupid little imps being important is in sealed play. Yeah. Which sealed play is important. It I is. love sealed play. Like, that's one of the things I'm actually the best at. Um, so I will definitely like to see them in my sealed decks. Um, I'm going to be in Ohio and Gen Con, both, both main events. So if I see them there, depending on how, you know, whether they do what I think they'll do in sealed play, I, I'll be excited to see them, especially the gold key imp, obviously, because that is the one that matters the most. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I think. I think it's sealed play. They're a live card outside of sealed play. I will be shocked. I mean, they they're do. they're too damaged. They died all relentless whispers. They died in yeah. air blast. But that depends on how. When we'll get into shadows in a little bit. But that oh, depends uh, on well, how. Well, remember, like a lot of the is. things that kept these little two people alive are shadow self. Shadow yeah. self is not in cycle. Nope. And there's so, well, there's a lot of good taunt though. So when we'll we'll get into well, that, that in a little bit. We can but, talk about that too, but you, you like people kept mentioning that to me because they talked about Dusk Witch leaving. And I was like, I, and I would shoot at them. Shadow Selves is gone. I was like, well, I can just taunt away because there are better taunt in this set. I was like, that's fine. But it doesn't this stop set has damage. more stuff that does two and one damage than the other set. <laughs> yep. So, okay, like, and obviously we already talked about, you know, I just mentioned Coda already brings those two damage stuff with them in competitive play. So, like, I I see these imps affecting the meta almost none. And a lot of what you'll find, uh, at least of what I've seen, is they took old cards, basically actions mm -hmm. from Coda, and then and made them, them into creatures. Yeah. Now, that said, there's some stuff that I really do love from this set. I don't think it's going to help their state as far as being competitive. Because my prediction is this goes down to fifth, sixth rank in the meta. I, I think they took a major if you're, step back. If, if you're just talking about AOA versus AOA. Well, I mean, just in general. Yeah. So fifth or sixth AOA disc is my projection here. But you have some fun cards. Call the Week, Play Action, Amber, Destroy the Least Powerful Enemy Creature. That's awesome. It's common. You can have three in a deck. That's way better than Hand of Disc because Hand of Disc was absolute trash. It was so hard to execute it right. And if they see that you're playing Disc, they just put their best creatures on the flank anyway. The cards that I... The, one of my favorite things is being able to go through my deck fast. They did add the Yurks. Those are all great cards. Um, they're not going to be that much of a board presence because I think they're all like four or five or something. Uh, um, four, but, five, and six. Yeah. But being able to discard those cards to get through your deck to see all your cards, that's a really cool mechanic to add onto a creature. So I particularly love that because the only thing that Dis really had to push their deck in the past was Library of the Damned, one of my favorite all-time cards. Um, I, I'm really excited to actually have like some uh, sealed games where I have the Yerks, but I do not foresee myself playing Dis in Vault's Archon ever. Um, if it's from AOA... <laughs> Because uh, I think the nerf for them in general is that big. Uh, the, I guess the best card that this has in this set, um, if it's in chained play, is just flat out amazing, and that is Binding Irons. Yep, um, dig it. I got a deck think, with three of them. Yeah, Binding That's Irons is crazy good. Um, but still, I... I, when I first saw that, I thought, like, okay, this is going to be super crazy good again. But then when I saw the stuff that they lost, I don't know if three Binding Irons in a deck makes up for not having a win condition in Dis anymore. Yeah, like, no, that's, it that's what I'm saying. Like, that three <laughs> Binding Irons is not a win condition unless you're playing in a chained environment where your opponents start with chains. Yeah. Now, so if they start with chains, that's that card could just straight up like win you the game. Final but... thoughts Dis, step up. Step back. Step down. Step All back. All right. Moving to Logos. What did you... I mean, Logos, for me, I mean, kind of just stayed flat. I really disagree. So I haven't actually sat down and counted it, but I'm feeling when I was going through this, 
there must at least be twice as much archive in this set than there used to be. There is. Absolutely. So I think that allows for OTKs that we haven't seen before um, because of that amount of archive. If you, if I'm like my gut instinct from just reading all the cards, I haven't literally done the math is that there's roughly twice as much archive from the average logos deck as there was in Coda. So if we really think about that, like the average Coda archive per set of 12 is one to three cards in your deck are archiving something. If it really is the double that I feel it is when I'm reading through these cards, I, I mean, you're talking about two to six on the average a Logos de- set of 12 is archiving a card. That's going to create combos that we don't really think about. unless Like there's a few decks out there in the, the meta in Coda right now that do that with a lot of freaking work. And they're very rare. If that's like the average coming out of Logos, like so you're saying a good Logos archive set is going to hit six to seven cards that can archive, that's going to start creating scenarios that we've never even seen at the rate at which they can do it. Because there are decks out there that can OTK out of Untamed with stuff like Full Moon, Seed, because they can literally generate that much Amber and play their key cheats more than once. Um. And if you can archive at this rate, I think we're going to start to see OTKs because of the logo set, not related to a loop. And it's very possible. Um, I'll just tell you in my testing over the weekend that those sets like you're talking about exist, Mm -hmm. but they're rare and difficult to pull off. They can be pulled off. It's just yeah. I think you really your relatively think average deck is not going to be able, like I, I agree with that. With what you, I, I would have guessed that that would happen. Your your average logo set is not going to do enough for the other two houses because the other two houses are average. But what I think is going to happen is your completely average logo set can, if your other two houses are top end, can make that a top vault level deck almost immediately because of what they do. And I could have, I can I can get behind that idea. So this isn't what I'm basically my summation is Logos goes up to third in the I would put a like immediately put Logos as the third ranked house in AOA. Oh, see, they were already at number three for me. So yeah, well, I mean, so, yeah. So I put them at the third ranked house because literally whatever is number one and two, the that Logos house supporting those two as the other two houses will make those decks ridiculous. <laughs> Moving into Mars, step up or step back? Oh, did we do logo um, step? I mean, you're saying logo step up. I said logos flat, uh, um, but you said they're I, moving into three. I'm trying I already to think. Had them of, at three. Yeah, I think they that actually. I guess that is a a. I did already have them third, so I guess that it. Well, actually, no, because now as of today. Logos is fourth or fifth in Coda. That's true because they do <laughs> they do lose their big piece. So I guess I guess I'll go with you then and say step up because yes, I mean so I if, thought they yeah. were a top three house to start with. So I had Logos at, at third. I had it Dis Shadows Logos Logos Untamed, yep. and now that's Logos is probably gonna. I mean they can't go below anything else. So now Logos would go fourth. Untamed would be third. And but in AOA, I would definitely put Logos at least third. I would really have to look at the rest of the houses to see if they could potentially be higher because I don't actually see, I don't see a win condition in Logos. The key cheat that they get is horrible. Yeah, it's not good. If you don't agree with me, you just need to play a few more games, <laughs> do some play, stat tracking, play about forty games with it, and never have it go off once. Well, it, it's just math. Like, uh, like I, I, I really love the Crucible's, uh, the Crucible tracker. Yeah. Um, Strong Link made it. Uh, it shows you the average number. Like, so I sent him a suggestion. My suggestion was track the average number of turns that you have uh, per game, and then break that down by how many, at, on average, how many times do you call each house? So after you do that, you can actually go in and look at that. And when it comes down to it. Most decks, you're averaging somewhere in the threes of each house you call. So if you're average per house right now for all Coda decks that are played with the number of turns that they get to execute a win condition is three something, that will tell you exactly how bad this artifact is. (laughs) Yeah, it's like I said, we played probably about 40 games with it. 
we never got it to we never got it to fire. You you are not calling logos five times in the average game.